Okay, okay. It's, just it's to, not a problem. Just to, uh, we'll just uh, to turn on to say hi, okay? Yeah. So that's, that that's you perfect. Don't see okay. People that you are talking about. Yeah, hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, welcome to Romania. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, so thank you for joining me. I, I, Elena, which one is Elena? It's me. It's hi, me. Elena. And, and I'm sorry, what is your name? Victoria. Victoria, hi. Thank you so much. My name is Morty. Um, so, uh, Victoria, I don't know if you know, but I'm doing this podcast to, to show to uh, as many people as possible um, what, st what stories you have to tell about the situation in the Ukraine. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, all over yes. the world, yeah. and yes, uh, true. this is my um, my effort to uh, to to show what's really happening out there from real people, uh, because now it's personal. It's not just someone on TV telling you something that may or may not be true. So, thank you very much yeah. for joining me. Um, so, uh, so just briefly, I know your names. We already did that, uh, Elena and Victoria. What what is your backgrounds or your occupations? Uh, background. Uh, uh, I am psychologist, actually. Psychologist. Okay, you're psycho Great. And Victoria? I'm a, a photographer, portrait photographer. Okay, great. And where are you guys? Where are you from uh, in the Ukraine? From Kiev. Uh, we actually we actually live in the suburbs of Kiev that are now um, under the the biggest attack. Uh, the small towns called Bucha and Hostomel and uh, they've been under the attack for 12 days now, 13 days, and uh, people left there, they have no electricity, and they um, no humanitarian aid can reach them, and no evacuation corridors, so we are pretty worried about... Yeah, because they are shooting every, every day, like every day. Yeah, after. and when they try to evacuate some people, um, Russians... Um, uh, shoot them in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and where, where are you guys speaking from speaking to me from now? Where are you right now? In Romania, it's a city Timisoara. Okay. Uh, and town to place when, here. when did you start evacuating, uh, those towns in Kiev? Uh, actually, it was on the first day that war started. Uh, we were at my place in Hostomel, in my private house. <clears throat> uh, and we woke up at six in the morning um, to the sounds of explosions and uh, sounds of shooting. Well, at that moment, I didn't know what it was yet, but I learned it very soon, very fast. And we've spent almost a whole day there um, waiting for it to quiet down. We thought it will pass because we were thinking that it was only an airport they were aiming to. So uh, we took even a couple pictures of the smoke coming from the side of the airport. But it was really scary because the planes were uh, uh, flying very low above the house and then we heard explosions and we saw the smoke and my house is pretty small and it doesn't have a basement so we couldn't um, really hide and we just sat on the floor in the bathroom um, it was it felt like the safest place Mm, but at some point, um, it, it was like every hour there were some attacks and then quiet time. And uh, it, it was getting more and more intense. And uh, we felt that we really needed to get out. And um, I think at 7 p.m. when it was quiet, we gathered, I gathered my stuff and we left on my car and went to Lena's house to get her stuff and her cat. And we went to Kiev because Kiev was pretty quiet at that moment. But the first, it was the first night in Kiev uh, uh, with uh, attacks as well. So early in the morning in Kiev, uh, we left for the Western Ukraine. Right. And when did you cross over uh, to uh, Romania? Mm. Uh, we've spent two days uh, on the road just to get to the western city, Ternopil, because uh, there were huge traffic jams. It's like 600 kilometers, but it took us two days and uh, 12 hours driving each 
actually. And we spent two nights in Ternopil just to rest. And we, actually, we wanted to stay there. Maybe we thought it would be quiet. But again, we heard air uh, raid um, um, alarms. And so we decided to leave for the border. And we knew that in Moldova, it was easier to cross the border uh, than, straight, than going to straight to Romania. So we went first to Moldova, spent a couple nights there resting just in silence. And then we crossed the border to Romania. So it was like, I don't know, fifth or seventh or fifth, fifth or sixth day of war. Actually, we are not very good with um, days and numbers right now. Yeah, something sure. like this. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And who else went with you besides the two of you? Nobody. It, oh, just so was, the- it was my cat, but we left uh, the cat in uh, Western Ukraine because it's difficult to with, travel. With people, with people he, with, he is uh, safe? Yeah, he's safe. He's safe. <laughs> because we didn't want him to, to bring you over the borders, so we didn't know what to expect or where we would go. So right. we left the cat. Right. So, and how is your family doing? Do you still have family in the Ukraine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have. I have my parents in Kiev. Uh, They decided not to go out. I tried to push a bit to go out, but they don't want to. They want to stay. So, yeah, they are there. And uh, they are okay, if we can say so. They have food. They live in a district where not so dangerous. (laughs) Also, if we can say so. Um, yeah, but uh, I am really anxious about this. But they right. made this kind of choice. I've heard that from other people that I spoke with as well, that the parents typically don't want to go. They want to sure. stay. I'm not sure why that is. Obviously, it's easier to stay than to go. But um, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. But maybe, maybe you know. Any reason why they didn't want to leave? They say that if it's fate, so it, it is fate. Right. Something like this. Maybe when you're a little bit older, it's easier to accept it. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe. Yeah. They also they also say that it's more dangerous to travel and to go nowhere because uh, uh, a lot of older people they don't speak uh, other languages and right. um, it's um, hard for them to cross the border. For example, we do speak English at least. And uh, we can easily get around. We have jobs and older people or those who don't speak English, they just cross the border and they stand there uh, so lost and they, they just right. need to be guided. They need help. And I think that's what they're afraid of. Yeah, um, make, it makes total sense. So um, so what is your daily life like now? You went to, it sounds like you went to Moldova, then you went to Romania. What's what's the plan? Um, the good news is you're not in the war right now, but what's the plan for the next few days or a few weeks? Well, uh, we've been crossing Romania for several days now because it's a big country, and uh, it took a. In general, it's like twelve hours driving from the border to this western city that we are in. Okay. So we had to take a couple stops um, several nights. Um, Fortunately, there were amazing Romanian people who took us in yeah. for the night. They are they, they're treating us so well that we are. I cry every time this happens because people are giving us anything they want to help with so much. There were even families fighting for us to stay with them, <laughs> and uh, it's it's really touching. We get so much help. Um, and right now we've been staying here for several nights and we want to move further probably to the Netherlands because we have friends there okay. and they are waiting for us mm-hmm. and we can Great. stay there for, for, for w- whatever. Time. Yeah. For yeah, some time. They mm-hmm. told Good. us that we can stay and maybe find a job or something like this. Yeah. We could right. work there. Because Ukrainians have a lot of uh, um, privileges right now in Europe. Uh, We can um, um, take train uh, with Ukrainian passport and go free. Any most, yeah, most of the European trains, for example. And there are special um, conditions for Ukrainians. We can even work. So we'll do our best to 
to stay sane and to work uh, as much as we can. But uh, I'm actually pretty determined to uh, go back as soon as it's possible and to rebuild what we will have left. Yeah, we supposed to. If when we so, when it uh, end. Yes, uh, wonderful. From as my grandmother used to say, from your mouth to God's ears. Yeah, we have the we same, have the same, same. same. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. I think my grandmother is probably from Kiev, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, do you have friends? I'm sure you do, or relatives that stayed behind to actually fight, or volunteer, or they're on the streets, or. Yeah, my dad is actually he stayed in Kiev uh, because he has military education. Uh, well, he's not military by occupation, but he had it when he was a, a student, because most of uh, our men do. And uh, he says that um, I'm. Uh, he said something like, "I'm on service here. I'm staying." So he's in this local defense group. We have a lot of those local defense groups in right. every city. And do you know that uh, there is actually a waiting list to these uh, defense groups that people just cannot get in right, right now? Yeah. 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 A yeah. lot of uh, men uh, stay. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine who I interviewed told me that as well, that, you, that they closed it up because they just can't take, take any more people. Um, are you able to follow now that you're in the West, so to speak, are you able to follow the news? To, so you, so you see what's going on real news. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So several of the folks that I spoke with told me that their friends and family in Russia, um, do not believe what they are being told by their cousins or their, you know, their, their relatives. Have you had that experience? Well, I have a lot of uh, my family members who live in Russia um, and friends also, and my clients, actually. I had clients there. Now I don't, but before all my clients were from Russia, a lot of, and most of them believe us because they seen our Instagram, my Instagram, where I put all the stories and uh, uh, but I'm sure there are people, even my relatives, they don't tell me the truth, I think. <laughs> but maybe they have some other opinion that we haven't discussed. But my personal, my, my friends, they are they believe and they understand what's going on. And they, they are really shocked. And they don't want this. But yeah, still there are a lot of people in Russia who don't believe. And yeah, they believe Putin and stuff. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure what you know, but I, I tell this to everyone that I talk to from the Ukraine that, you know, the United States and the entire Western world is rallying around the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian government doing what it can to support the Ukraine. Everyone I know is making donations of clothing, medicine, medical supplies, money, things like that to uh, to support the, the, the heroism that the Ukrainian people are really showing. Um, because what I believe and what I tell everyone is you're not just really fighting for your own freedom. You're really fighting for yeah. everyone's freedom. Yeah, it's true. Yes, absolutely. So uh, it's really ma magnificent. Uh, so what is your just last few questions, then I'll let you go. What, what is your hope for the future? What do you what do you see? What do you hope was going to happen? I'm actually pretty hopeful. I'm usually <laughs> it, I, I'm usually very optimistic in life, uh, so um, I'm pretty hopeful that it will end um, well in a couple of weeks by the end of the March. Uh, and we have information that um, the Russian army is pretty demoralized. They've lost their generals uh, and. Uh, and uh, the pressure, uh, economic pressure, is pretty huge. So I am, I'm, I absolutely believe that uh, we will be able to come back pretty soon and to start to build a new country again. Yeah, yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. 
Great. So um, is there anything else you'd like to say to people who listen to this podcast? Uh, uh, my expectation is at some point in the next week or so, hopefully there will be hundreds, if not thousands of people that are watching this. Anything that you want to say to them? Uh, personally, uh, personally, I would like to say uh, thank you. Thank you so much for helping us, for supporting us, for um, uh, and, and you personally uh, for doing this interview right now because we really need information to spread out. We really need people to know what's going on. And uh, what I want um, to add that um, we feel huge wave of love, huge. You know, it's the opposite to the death brought by Russia, but we feel so covered with um, or cuddled uh, with this love and... Um, we believe that love always wins. And uh, when so many people are praying and so many people are involved, love is supposed to win. It will win. Yeah. I, I love always, love always wins. Hopefully. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elena. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I say that uh, I totally relate to because Victoria's word because we've discussed this a lot about this huge love we get now and uh, yeah, actually, we believe that uh, we win, that Ukraine will be free. Yeah. And we also actually believe that uh, there is a new world coming, that uh, this is like the old system is uh, being... Um, falling apart. Yeah, falling apart. And the new world is emerging. And we don't know what it will look like, but something is emerging from Ukraine and spreading to the whole world. And we really hope that it will be something very new and very good. <laughs> yeah, so agree 100%. Anyways, thank you again for both of you, Victoria and Elena, for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, we wish that you and your family and your country, of course, is free from suffering very soon. And I look forward to, uh, to meeting both of you one day in, uh, in free Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. much. Slava right, Ukraine. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.